Okay, good morning. So we are going to review our summer bucket list from uh, our homework last night. And I just made a copy of our homework folder, so I'm not working in our repo directly, but it'll be the exact same files, so we'll be able to come across the exact same bugs that you guys came across too. And hopefully by the end, you'll have a better understanding of um, how authentication works and how we can debug, I think, most of all. Um, so, okay, first things first, we want to npm install our packages. So I'll be literally following along with the code. Um, readme. Okay, so that is, I think that's done. We always want to check our package, make sure all our dependencies exist here. Let's go ahead and run mongod and mongo. Cool, make sure there are no errors. All right, at this point, if we run Notamon, um, it, won't, it, it won't work. Okay. All right, so we have to do quite a bit of setup before we can get our server to work. So um, in this assignment, we asked to modify the user first. Because in your app, you probably don't want just a user that has a email and password. You probably want like first name, last name, username, and other properties for your user. And just think about you know apps you use and apps you sign up for, what information you give them. Okay, so we have a user model. And um, I think it's actually completed. Where's our model? Yeah. I left, I left username and list here, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Um, in the code Colin gave us, uh, these didn't exist. Um, but when we embed different models into uh, our schema, we're going to put them into arrays and call them here. But right now, list schema is not defined, right? We, I have little comments everywhere saying we have to define it. So I know you guys came across problems with that. But you know what, user, user schema is done, so we could just skip that. Um, but if we want the user schema to have username and password, that means when they sign up, they have to be able to provide us username as well, right? So let's go find our um, sign up form. And you know, I ask myself questions in my head all the time. So I'm like, what's next? Okay, I fixed the schema, now I have to find the sign up form. Where is that? not make more work. <laughs> so where's that? We know it's under users and it's under the sign up form here. Okay, so we have um, email and password already and let's just add one more field for when users sign up. I'll just copy this whole div. I'm gonna replace email with username. And um, we're gonna replace uh, this name with username and this label for username. So let me explain this real quickly. Remember that this name refers to the key, okay? So it's not just arbitrary things. You have to make sure you spell this correctly and that it matches with, let me open this up, with this. So if we put name here, for example, if you choose to name it name, then here we have to make sure it corresponds and that name is equal to name. All right, so that's like debugging part one right there. Making sure um, our schema uh, is set up properly and all our forms name labels are matching as well. Because that's how we grab it through rec.body.username. Uh, okay, so we fixed our form, so that's good. And finally, so we have our user uh, sign up form but the final step would be to actually save this information to the database. So that means we have to go to our controller, find the route that lets us create new users, and make sure we can save the username we just created. So that's down here in the post route. Um, what we have is when a user hits this route, when we submit that form, um, a new user is created. So if we want to include that username. Let's go ahead and add that now, rec.body.username. All right, 
so that is all set. And um, if we check our work at this point and we run Notum on, let's see what happens. Error messages galore. All right. And it's good to take a look at our um, error messages. So in this instance, list schema is not defined. Um, and let's see where this error comes from. It tells us right here from DB schema, line 13. So let's go to DB schema, line 13. This is what we were just talking about, right? Um, it does not recognize what list schema is. And that is correct, because we haven't defined it yet. So let's stop our server and move on to the next part. And let's create the list model and schema. Um, so in this assignment, the list schema is super easy. It just has two properties, name and completed. Um, if this is the example, then we want to match our data type. So let's go ahead and on the same schema page, I'll put it above, below. It doesn't really matter where it goes as long as we put it somewhere. We're gonna create a new schema. And let's see, the properties are name, and we want this to be a string with a capital S. And completed is going to be true or false, so that'll be a Boolean. Okay, let's save that. Um, but that's not the only piece of the puzzle. Uh, let's go ahead and add this pre function here as well. Uh, I'm really lazy, so I'm just going to copy this. Paste it here, and instead of user, let's just go ahead and write list schema. So list schema is pertaining to this uh, list schema we just created. Two more things. Uh, we still have to uh, make a model out of it, so let's go ahead and do var list model. I mean, you could maybe put all the list stuff up here and all the user stuff here, um, just as long as it makes sense to you guys. I like kind of lumping um, same syntax together, so it's, it's a little bit easier for me to find stuff. The schema. Um, okay, so that's what that is. We could delete that. And of course, uh, none of this would even be accessible unless we export it, right? So let's go ahead and export the list model we just created. So I'm gonna call it list. You can call these whatever you like, but I think good convention is to call um, whatever your model name is right here. We want consistency in all our names. Otherwise, if you like forget an S, oopsie, I just added an extra S, then you'll get syntax errors and typos, and then we can't even move on. Okay, so I saved that. Um, so we created our list schema. Let's try running the server again. See if that fixes our issue, and it should still break. But let's see what it says. All right, let's scroll back up. Okay, at least you don't have the cannot find list schema anymore. So we know that um, as far as this point goes, this the schema page is set, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And as you work, try not to keep, you know, 100 tabs open here, because you're only gonna confuse yourself because everything is named the same. <laughs> All right, so let's check out this error message. Cannot find module models list JS. Okay, um, what's more helpful for me is where this is coming from, because then you'll really understand where uh, your app is breaking. So <clears throat> right here in controllers, users JS line five. So let's go there. Anytime there's an error, I go straight to the line that throws the error. So already on the user's controller, line five. Um, yep. We are asking for the model's uh, list model, and it's non-existent here, right? So we can go ahead and create that. You can create um, your file within a terminal, or again, I'm just lazy, and I just create it straight from here with a right click. So I'm gonna create that. Um, if we're impatient, we can also you know, there's no rules to this. This is your app. You can really do whatever you like. Let's comment this out and the thing that's causing the error. <clears throat> oh, and see, it already restarted. There are no errors. Um, so, you know, we have multiple ways of working with our app. But you know what? I'm going to keep building the list model just to finish the loop on that. So I'm going to uncomment this. It'll still throw an error because it doesn't exist. <clears throat> 
And um, again, I'm super lazy. So I'm just gonna go to the user model. I'm gonna copy this, because honestly, the only thing we need to change is we're not calling our uh, user anymore, we're asking for our list. But let me explain where all this stuff comes from. It's not just like arbitrary stuff. Oops, this has to be capital O. Very, very mindful. And what are we exporting? We're exporting uh, the schema.list that we save into a variable. So remember, because we're acquiring schema up here, uh, uh, let's go to our schema page. <clears throat> we saved it as capital list, our whole list model. So if you call this something else, uh, I don't know, list model maybe. I don't know why you would do that, but the point being, you would want to call list model, for example, okay? Just don't get confused with all the same names everywhere. They all actually represent different things. All right, so we created our list model, making sure there's no user here. We want it to be uh, connected to the list and our server is now running. Okay, if it's running, let's see if we can actually access our app then and let's see what that looks like. Uh, remember, we're running on 4,000 slash users. Let's see if this throws any errors. Nope, we are able to see our page. Perfect. Okay, so let's keep moving then. Now, again, there are multiple ways you can tackle this, but let's go ahead and fix our authentication middleware, right? Because we want to create new users, but then we have this whole thing where uh, only the logged in users should be able to see their show page. So this will be a repeat of what we did yesterday. And this is what we did yesterday afternoon, writing our middleware function. So let's just do one more repass on this, why we do it, um, how do we do it. All right, so in helpers auth, we have a separate helpers auth folder. And let me just make a note. Um, technically, we could write our full bucket list app on one giant JavaScript page. Um, instead of putting everything in folders and files, but that's not a good idea. So for us to just keep ourselves organized, we just store everything in its own folder and file. And it's just a matter of knowing how to access the material in those files. And we use module.exports for all that stuff. So if you're ever having any issues, make sure you're exporting it. And um, it works in conjunction with require. So each file should always have a require, and a module that exports if you're using it somewhere else in your app. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to the, the readme. Okay, in helpers auth, create one more function called authorize. So let's find it. Again, order doesn't matter. We could put it in any order, but let's just put it down here. We're gonna create a function called authorize. You can call this whatever you like, but you know, the more descriptive, the better. I'm gonna pass in our three parameters. <clears throat> uh, is my syntax right? Yes, I think. I have this linter, so it throws me errors all the time. Yeah, I'm a circle. Okay. Um, so in here, we want to check if the current user is in rec.session or if the current user's ID matches the ID from rec.params uh, ID. If not, send a JSON 404. All right, so remember we had a couple ways of doing this. Um, so I'll go over one way of doing this. So I'm gonna say, let's pseudocode this. Let's pseudocode our thoughts out. <clears throat> There's no need to just like type blindly. We wanna check if, if there is no user, let's be more specific, specific, if there is no logged in user, or if the IDs don't match, then send an error. All right, else, uh, else, move on. Proceed, move on, proceed to the show page. So now that we understand what we're trying to do in this function, let's go ahead and type this out. Again, there's more than one right way to do this, but uh, if there is no logged in user, so if there is no, right, that exclamation point means the opposite value um, for a Boolean. So if no rec.session.currentUser, because as you guys learned, we're saving um, 
the current user in rec.sessions. Or there's a second conditional here too. Or if, oof, comma, session.current user, if the ID does not match the rec.params ID, then we want to send a JSON error. So res.json. And JSON is simply a object. 401 means um, it's a HTTP error for unauthorized, so we could send a 401. Else, else, if there is a current user and if the ID is matched, then we can move on. And as we learned for our middleware functions, we simply use uh, the function next. But remember, this next won't work unless you uh, put next here, just like it won't recognize what res is if you leave it out, and same with the rec. So, um, we're using all three parameters here, and we are invoking all of them. <clears throat> we're using all of them at least. Okay, no errors so far, that looks good. But finally, we still have to export this, right? Any new file, any new function you create, if you want to use it in a different file, you must export it. So if you're having issues, um, and it's like cannot find, does not know what authorized is, make sure you actually have exported it out. I think this is a very common issue. Um, so I'm going to call this authorized, and its value will be the uh, authorized function. Again, we can call this whatever we like. Um, check it out. And if you use this somewhere, make sure you call it check it out. But let's be consistent, and let's call this authorized. Okay, cool. So coming back to our readme, we created the function, yes, but now we have to add it to our actual route. Cool. Again, if you have any questions, just feel free to stop me. Um, I feel like we went over this uh, pretty well yesterday, but if not, I can answer any questions. So let's go back to the route that uh, we want to use this function on. It's going to be in the user's controller, right? And when you guys make your own apps, you're obviously not going to have a prompt. You are the ones architecting, architecturing your own app. So you decide where things go. Okay, so we don't even have that uh, route yet, so let's build it. So what we're saying is when we get a git request to this, let's put our callback function in. Hopefully you guys can do this in your sleep now. And um, you know what, let's just do like, uh, um, uh, what is this, show route is accessed. Before I even build out the meat of the function, I always want to make sure my route is even hooked up properly. And before I even test that, let's just clarify um, what routes this whole user controller gets, right? So from our server page, anytime we access users, we use the users controller. So I like to like make myself a note that this page, or this um, user's controller, all these routes are accessed from 4,000 slash users, and that's what this is. So any, uh, any one of these, that means will be an extension of here. So, so let's just uh, copy this. Like, I just like visualizing what am I working with, especially when we go to second and third and fourth controllers, you're gonna get really confused on your, on your resources and you're gonna be working on the wrong routes. And oh man, if just knowing what we're actually working with would have saved a lot of time. So let's just be very thoughtful of how we do this. So basically this route is saying, whenever we visit the user's ID, we're gonna show the show page. And um, so we're still working on the middleware function, so let's go ahead and add this. Actually, you know what, let's, let's test, let's test. I hate writing too much code without testing it. So let's see if we can actually sign up somebody. Okay, cool, there's our form. Um, let's sign up Chad. I've been testing out Chad lately. Chad, 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 and password Chad. Um, so here we go, we get the, we get a post. Right, so I love Mori, and it tells you exactly what traffic is coming into your server. We're getting a post request for slash users. 
uh, meaning this route got hit. And in our post route, we're saying redirect to user's login, right? And uh, this is the strip people up to, but it's okay. Um, and you know what? And we got a show route as access. So this route got hit too. Because, look at this, uh, we're, we're going to user sign up. So you know what? We could even be like show route access, console.log, rec.params.id. You never want to assume our code is perfect. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and try this again. Let's try to get every bug so you guys are really confident. So I still have to sign him up because uh, I don't think he is. Um, yeah, so our show route is access, but you know our ID is not ID, we're getting a login route. So before we even move on and build this route, let's fix this, right? We're not supposed to see login. And we're actually not being redirected to a login page. Why? Because on user slash login, we're looking for a get request to slash login. No, no, no. Well, it's hitting this route because it doesn't exist on this page. Login, um, the login actually uh, exists in the sessions page. So hopefully if you guys were able to look through your files and really get to know what is happening, we can now change this to sessions. It's not living in users, it's living in session. Wait, session or sessions? Oh, let's check. It's in our server. So we're saying sessions. Whenever we hit sessions, use a sessions controller. So it is sessions. There are always places to check. You never have to assume. Okay, so let's start this process again. I know it's slow and tedious, but, um, but this way we can get like a really tight app and we don't have to kill ourselves like dealing with 20 bugs at one time. We just work one by one by one by one. So here we go. We are successfully um, redirecting to the login page just by making sure we know where the login uh, route exists, not in this controller. Um, so let's continue on. Let's actually see if we can log in as Chad. Um, so what's supposed to happen after I submit this? Uh, uh, where's our login? Let's check it out. So we're saying once we post to the login, it will redirect to the user show page. So for thinking like our controller, the user show page is this exact uh, route that we're working on. So what we should see is this message again, show route is access, but instead of login, we should see the actual ID number. So let's try it out. All right, cool. So look down here. I don't know if you can see. It's saying waiting for local host down here, and it's just hanging out, right? And it's just going to hang out because uh, it's waiting for a response, and we didn't give it a response. We just told it to log some stuff. So it's just going to hang out, and it'll time out eventually. Um, but if you check our terminal, uh, we can now see this is exactly what we want, and we will go ahead and proceed with this route. All right, so again, just piece by piece. There's no need to like go through your notes and copy and paste all the routes all at once and then debug it that way. Um, I don't think that's very helpful at all. And I think it's better if you work line by line. Okay, so I'm gonna delete those logs because I have confirmed this is exactly what we want. And let's go ahead and build this. You know, actually, I will leave one more log. Um, instead of a, a log, let's actually send something. We'll say, woo, show page. So let me save this and go back in. I think I refreshed too quickly. So let's log in again as Chad. Chad, Chad, Chad. Okay, all right, and here we go. We are able to see our uh, show page, right? But um, the reason why we're gonna use middleware is if I use like user slash two, I still see a show page. I'm obviously not user slash two, slash four. I should not be able to see them. So because of that, let's go ahead and add our middleware function here now. And in order for us to use it, um, it's not on this file. So that's why we have to require it up here, right? Because we exported it. Um, and so where are we? So now we're gonna put auth, no, auth helpers dot, and then our function name, 
which is authorized. Yes, it, Adam is smart enough to know what we're talking about, so we'll go ahead and use authorized, comma. Again, painfully slow debugging. Let's go ahead and see if this worked. Don't assume our syntax is perfect. Let's actually check it. Okay, so we still get the Woo show page, but let me try to access user, I don't know, six. Um, okay, and we don't actually get to see it, and we get this error message instead. So part of our middleware is working. Let's actually see, can't set headers after they are sent. Okay. Um, okay, cool, so at least we know that uh, Chad can view his own user page. Okay, so let's keep working on this and we'll get rid of those error messages. Woo! All right, this is fun, right? I don't know, I think it's fun. If there are any questions at this point, feel free to shout them out. Otherwise, we'll try to, our next step will be populating um, the users onto this page. So let's do that. We're not gonna send this anymore. We have confirmed that our route is working and our middleware is working. So let's see the code. What does this route do? You know, um, your app probably won't look just like this homework or our notes, so really think about what you're trying to do here. We're gonna find the logged in user uh, and uh, show the show page. So we actually have a couple things going on. And it's really up to you on how you want to tackle it. We still have our index page that doesn't display users. We can go for that, which will be this route here. We can continue with this route um, and move on. So, you know what, I'll just continue with this so we're not bouncing back and forth. We'll tackle the index page and show the users' names right after we do this. Um, yeah, I don't like splitting my thoughts between many, many routes because then it becomes super confusing and then like you end up linking to the wrong routes. Uh, so let's continue this one. Okay, so we all know that we can now use user and a very handy mongoose query is find by ID, right? And we could find the ID simply by finding the rec.params, rec.params.id. Okay, let's add our exec function and let's put our callback in here. So this function takes in an error and we can name the second parameter whatever we want. I can call it potato. But basically whatever this variable is will be the result of this query. Obviously we don't want potato, we want something way more descriptive like our user. As long as you're understanding what these variables are because we're gonna use user like 100 different times here and they're all basically different things. Okay, in here, um, we could do our catch, or I mean our error statement. So if there's an error, let's console log the error. Let's visualize it. And before I even write any more functionality, again, I just have to test. Did I even write my query co correctly? If I have a typo, I will be able to catch it, and I know it's in this code because I haven't written much code. All right, so our server looks good. Let's go ahead and try logging in again. And what I should see is on the terminal, I should see my user object, and I do. I see my Chad, I see his empty list. So we know that this query is working. And I know that my user now is referring to this whole object that is my user, okay? All right, so now, now that I know that my code is working, let's go ahead and do stuff with this user. All we want to do in this is we actually just want to render the show page, which lives in show.hbs. You don't need the HBS extension, but I just, I don't know, I like being complete. And this is what hangs people up a lot. It's the second parameter. Ugh, why is this more complicating than it should be? Um, remember, we always pass in an object, right? So let's just make things break. Let's test, let's test it out. If I know my user is an object, can I just pass in my user? Okay, let's see, we're halfway through. Okay, let's see. There's no, there's no wrong way of doing this. Just test it out. Um, um, 
okay, cool. So it, something happened and this didn't throw me an error yet, I think. So let's, we could test this out. Let's go to our show page. And so we know that that route worked, it redirected, we're on Chad's show page. And you know, let's replace username with actual, our actual name. Now, um, here we just passed user. Let's see, let's see what that does. You probably have played with every variation of how to pass this object, how to call it, and um, I'll just do it along with you guys. Okay, so nope, uh, that just took away username completely. This showed absolutely nothing. That's not quite what we wanted to do. Okay, so what if we wrapped this in an object, right, because we're passing an object. So objects need a key value pair. So let's use user. I am just creating this user. This user doesn't exist yet. You know, I'm just creating this object right now and I'm assigning it the value of this user object. So again, I could name this whatever I want. Let's do, you know, we sometimes call it data, um, just to not confuse it. So if I call this data with the value of user, let's go ahead and try that out. Maybe data dot username. Let's see. Chad, Chad, Chad. Okay, so now we see Chad's username. Awesome. All right, just, I'm so OCD. Okay, so we are able to get our user to show. Again, does not matter what you name any of this stuff. Just be very mindful of what you name it. Console log it, make sure it's actually what you think it is. Work piece by piece. I'm gonna repeat that like a hundred times today. So if you're ever like frustrated or you're confused, just hear my voice and say, okay, think, what do we have to do? Let's think piece by piece. Okay, so it looks like this edit route is done, right? We're able to um, find the current user logged in. You know what, let's try one more time. What if I log into user two? Yep, I get my 401 error message. So our route is complete and let's go ahead and fix our index route, right? Um, Cause these are just hard coded names, they're, they don't really do anything. So let's check this route out. And that means I'm gonna close all the files I don't need right now. Don't need this, don't need this. Definitely don't need our schema, we're done with that. We're done with sign up. Okay, so now let's work on our get route. Um, hmm, looks like this is working. It's already set up for you guys. I'm not gonna go through it because I just went through it over here, but we know that users, is gonna be our key name here. And I'm being very inconsistent, so on your assignment, or your homework, or your project, um, try to be consistent with, you know, don't change data and users, that'll be very confusing for you guys. So we're rendering the index page, so let's double click on the index page and check this out. Yes, everything is hard coded, so let us use some handlebars magic. All right, so for each, what do we call it? Users, yeah, for each, users for each user so let's close the loop on that for each users i want a list item with i want their name right so um it's it's username okay let's try this out let's just refresh this page and i should see chad oh three times so every time we um <laughs> checked our uh, sign up route and actually created our chat user. Um, so that's why he shows up. So maybe for you guys, you want to use some verification on your schema, right? Maybe make your username unique or something so you don't have uh, something like this. But this is just for demonstration purposes anyway. So that's it. Our index page is done. We're able to show all our new users. And again, like I hate just assuming it's fine. So let's sign someone else up. Let's sign me up. Let's see. Let's see. And let's make sure um, I am able to see my name on the page. Okay, so let's go back to the user's homepage and there I am. Okay, so let's recap. 
Um, it looks like all of our users CRUD is done. If you want to delete the user, absolutely go ahead and put your delete right here. If you want to update the user, feel free to add that here. We're going to move on to our list resource now. Okay, so I feel good about all my users controllers. I feel good about my users show page for now, right? We still have to fix our show page with all our lists and stuff, and that's what we're gonna work on next. So because I'm done with this, let's close this and let's move on to our lists controller. Woo, okay, here we go, here we go, we got this. So I have already exported modules down there. I don't know why, just testing you guys. And, um, uh, la, 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 la. Okay, cool. All right, so um, yes, let's do this first. We'll run it. We'll we'll see some errors, and we'll we'll try to debug it that way. Again, there's no like correct order of sequences here. It's just being aware of all the moving pieces and not overloading yourself. So we're gonna require Express because this is an Express app still. Hopefully you guys feel really good about router. Uh -huh. mm. We're gonna use Mongoose because we're gonna be querying our database using Mongoose queries. Um, okay, so we're gonna require our models here. We're gonna require both the list and the user. So let's go ahead and do that. List is equal to require. Okay, since we're handwriting this out, let me just go over really quickly on this mumbo jumbo, right? Why is, why is it like this versus this versus this versus nothing? Um, all that is, is it's, um, it's our relative path to our file. So since we are in this highlighted directory, lists in our controllers folder, we are trying to require a separate file living in a totally different folder here. So how do we do that? We want to go out of our current directory. So out of our current directory is dot, dot, slash. You want to go back down to models, down to models, and go back down into list.js, list.js. And that's all there is. And we're going to do the same thing for user. Um, it lives in the exact same folder, so it'll be the exact same path. Okay, I don't think I have typos, so that looks good. All right, okay. So we set up our requirements. I'm gonna try to get through create and edit in the next 20 minutes. I definitely won't have time to go through update and delete, but I think you guys will be more than ready to do full crud on your projects. Um, okay, so now we have to think, right? I, I split this up really weird because on the markdown I said, uh, so we took care, oh no, we have to take care of server.js. We have three uh, controllers here. So let's take a look at server. We have a users resource, a sessions resource, and I asked for a third one. Why? Because instead of having all of our CRUD functions in one file, you know, I wanted to separate it. Uh, so I don't confuse myself, at least later, maybe at first it's confusing, but um, we want to separate our concerns, separation of concerns. So let's go ahead and create this, and I'll explain why. Why can't I just put it in my user's controller? I thought this is that. Yes, true, true. Totally true. Um, and let's complete this. So we want it to reference our list controller, which we have not created yet, right? So there's two steps to this. Um, Colin put his up here, so you know what? I'll put mine up here too. List, wait, yeah. Um, I'm always thrown off by spelling, so make sure it's pluralized. Lists controller equals require. So the same thing with require, right? <clears throat> We're in this file, but we want to require a, full, uh, a file that lives in controllers, so it's just um, up one directory into controllers and back down to lists.js. Do I have any spelling issues? Yes, I forgot my quotes. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe I could show you guys how to use this linter. It, it like warns me if I'm missing stuff, it's handy. 
Uh huh. Okay. So now we get. Oh, wait, we don't get error. That's good. That means our server is still listening. Nothing on our server is causing issues. If there is, you know what? Let's make an error again. Let's do, let's make a typo. Let's call this list and save it. Um, yep, yeah, so if I have a typo here and you're like, oh man, why this break? Lists controller is not defined. Uh, server JS41, this line is causing it to break. So always just pay attention here. Um, and make sure that these match. I would say like 90% of the time errors are from typos over here. Okay, so because our spelling and syntax are correct, our server is up and running. This means, let me delete this comment. This means any requests going to this, da, 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 some ID list, etc. Any requests going to here will be routed directly to the list controller. It'll skip users controller, it'll skip sessions control. We'll handle all that stuff, all the CRUD stuff in the list controller. So let's actually copy this and go to the list controller. I apologize about these sirens. I listened to it all day. Okay, so um, because we know that um, anything based on this we're going to take up here let's move on okay we did controllers so let's move on here okay these are kind of all out of order you could really decide which route to work on first so what should we do let's work on the create let's create a let's create a list so we can actually see it okay here we go so we know that when we create something we use the Rotor.post. It's a post request. We're going to create it. Um, and it's going to be slash because what that means, like don't get confused with this stuff. That means whenever we make a post request to here, it's going to hit this route. Okay, so let's function rec res. And like what I do before I even fill out the meat of the thing, I'll say posted something. Let's go check it out. Uh, so let's log in. Go back to users. We can log in as me. Let's see, let's see. And, um, Let's post something, but <laughs> there's no form, right? So it's like, okay, let's put this on the back burner for now, and let's create our form. I'm so sorry about the sirens, guys. Um, okay, so let's close all the files we don't need again, because I'm just confusing myself. And the um, new form is going to be, let's be mindful, it's on the user's show page. Users show page. All right, we want it to be somewhere right here. Every time I hear sirens, it's like what people complaining sound like to me. Just wah. Okay, so let's create our form. A simple, simple form. Um, uh, Adam shortcut. Type out form. Press tab. Boom. Everything's done for you. So lazy. It automatically fills stuff out, so let's delete that. Uh, yep, we want it to be a post, right? And let's fill out the contents. All I want to do is scream out the window, move out of the way, guys! Just move! Okay, since we're going to create a... Uh, you have to think about this now. We're creating a new list. Let's refer real quick to what our list looks like. It's super simple. We're just creating a name. So let's do name equals name. Remember, remember this, this has to correspond with your uh, student's key. And let's place a placeholder. All right. Uh, somewhere. Seriously, guys, move out of the way. And one more thing, input type. We're going to put our submit button. So that is type submit, and let's give it like a uh, like add 
add it to the list. Now notice I haven't put in a input type for complete. Uh, I don't really want them to, like it, it doesn't make sense to me. Why would you want to create something just so that's completed already? So I'm actually only going to save the, uh, the name of it. And I'll show you what I do with the complete on the back end. Okay, so you know what? I haven't filled out my action yet. Let's just actually see if my form renders. Right, and every time my server restarts, it deletes our session, so we have to constantly log in. CNC, yeah, why not? Okay, so our form shows up perfect. Again, just work piece by piece. Um, and now we have to connect this form to our controller, right? So I'm done with schema, don't confuse me. And let's just put this right here. Okay. All right, so let's work right next to each other. There's no confusion here. Um, this is also a really big place where we create lots of errors because they're not corresponding with each other. So the action, even though our post says this, if we post it to just root, um, actually, let's try it. It should throw us an error. I want to go through all the error message with, messages with you guys and make sure you understand why. Why is it not working the way I want to in my head? Try to come up with a guess. What is going to happen if I post it here? What is going to happen? I don't know. Let's sleep. That's my thing. Yes, we get this cannot post. And we cannot post because we don't have a route for just slash, right? On our server page, we have just users, sessions, and users ID and lists. So instead, and this is why I always just copy and paste my local host, because I could just do this. Oh, wait, oops. I'm going to copy this route. I want to, to go exactly here. And um, obviously, we're going to replace this ID, right, because it's not proper syntax in here. We're going to replace it with some handlebars. So we want an actual, we want, we want each individual's ID to post to each individual's uh, database, right? So if we were able to access uh, the username through data, maybe data.id, is that how we can access the user ID? And if so, instead of getting this cannot post route and getting a 404, that route doesn't exist, we should see a console log in the back saying we posted something. Obviously, it will not save to our database because I have no queries here. We're just testing if our form actually matches the route. Okay, so everything is saved. I tend to forget to save everything. And let's go back, users. Uh, yep, here, let's log in as me. All right, and let's go to sleep. Okay. Um, so let's read our, well, we get an error message here and it actually matches the exact same error here. And we get a 404, meaning that, um, that route doesn't exist. It's looking for users slash users. And obviously we have an extra users here. Syntax matters. And to solve this, it's just adding a slash in front of it. Oh man. Isn't this the worst? Okay. So let's try one more time. Tedious, I know, but at least we, we have very little bugs um, at the end. Let's try this one more time. And here we go. We get a, we get a console log. Our, our form is routed correctly to our router. And if you look down here, the science is waiting for local host, and it's going to hang out and hang out because we have not sent a response yet. So let's, let's move on and actually do some functionality here. Let's actually create a, um, so let's, let's pseudocode this. We want to create, you know, maybe we want to find the user, right? Because we want it to save to our user, not all users. That would be really bad if we were able to push to all users. Uh, find the user, add the list to the user list array. And then finally, once that's completed, we want to redirect uh, back to the user show page. Back to the user show page. Again, whatever you want your route to do, just uh, make sure uh, you understand what I want to do. So first things first, let's find the user. 
And this is why we, rec uh, we require the user up here, because if we don't, it'll throw an error and be like, I don't know what you're talking about. User doesn't exist. So uh, we can only use user here because we have already required it here. If you guys are going to work with more than two models, then make sure you require your third model here so you can be able to access it here. Okay, so user dot find by ID again, because that's super handy. Now, okay, so we have this route, but how do we grab, how do we grab the user ID? Well, remember this route will only work if the user is logged in, if the user is logged in. So how can we access that? Well, the user that's logged in exists in our current user. How beautiful, and we just grab the ID of that. We'll do our same steps that we did for our user controller. Throw in our callback function. Uh, I'll call it user, so you guys already know what that is. Uh, let's do our error handling. If error, we'll console log the error. Uh, is that right? Yes. And again, before I even move on, I just want to make sure, does my query actually work? Do I actually have a user? All right, all right, all right. So let's log in. And, uh, oh yeah, so I still don't get my console log because we have to actually access the route that the console log lives in. So let's go ahead and post something. And we are able to get our user. Our Mongoose query is successful. We know that this uh, query by ID works, and now we can manipulate our user, right? So as you can see, we have a list of an array, and all our morning exercises is manipulating arrays, pushing things in, popping things out. So um, let's go ahead and do something with that. All right, we're getting so close, this is exciting. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. You mentioned um, the authorization, uh, function that we made earlier, but you didn't require it on this page. Is that still, is that still going to be okay and work correctly? Yeah, that's actually a great question. Um, so remember that all the requests coming from this is actually an extension of, um, of our users, right? So because in our users, we did that authorization stuff, um, it, we, we know that this post route is only available if the user is logged in. And just to double show you that, um, right here, this is our user controller. When we log, wait, no, 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 where is it? Up here, when we, sh when we get the user's show page, um, we can continue if the user is logged in. If not, then, then we can't even access this form. So, uh, you know, so these are, these are uh, connected hand in hand right here. Does that make sense, Audrey? Yes, because so you're, you're pretty much saying um, if you, we don't need to make a second authorization because they wouldn't be able to even get to the page if they're yes. not the current person. Exactly. Yep, so we're, we're, we're like working like step by step. So before you can even get to this wall, there's a check. Uh, if that check fails, then you can't even log in and you can't even access all the functionality. If it passes the check, which means, in our case, if, the, if we have a user logged in and if the user IDs match, then we can move on and all the functionality will be available for that page. So that's how we're restricting um, functions right here. So we can only, all this stuff will work only because our user show page uh, past the uh, authorized check right here, right? Because this is basically this route, and everything on our list page basically is an extension of that. Only because we are able to do this, we can now do all this stuff here. But the confusing part is because we have it in two separate controllers, it's like trying to link in your brain, how is all this stuff related? Um, so I just put tons of comments everywhere, to make sure I don't get confused here. Okay, so let's continue. Since we're able to find our logged in user, which only works because on our user controller, we authorize this user to move on to the show page. Let's actually, uh, there's a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this method. So 
we know how to access objects. If this is my user object, to go to the list, it's user.list, right? I'm going to use a push. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll use push. I think it's fun to see different ways to do stuff. So what do I want to push? I want to push a object. OK, so I put my curlies. And this object's name is going to be whatever I had passed in my form. So one more time. Name corresponds to this, OK? Um, if I call this, again, I use potato just because it's ridiculous and you will remember it. If I name this potato and my schema says potato, then I must use potato here. This is all referencing the same values, but we're not going to be ridiculous. Okay, so our new object that will be pushed into our list has a name of name, and this is where I'm going to take care of complete. Complete, I don't have a rec.body.complete, right? Uh, for me, it didn't make sense for the user to create it, so I'm going to hard code it. As soon as they create it, obviously it's not completed yet because it's a list, um, so I'm going to just hard code a value of false. Okay, so once we push that, we still have to do a few more things. You know what, let's go ahead and test this out real quick, just to hit more bugs so you can understand how to complete at the post route. Bugs, bugs, bugs. Let's go to me. So I think I have a fun one. Let's get crunk. OK, so again, it's going to hang out because I don't have a, uh, a response. Uh, my server is not telling me anything, right? So this is where I use console logs. If you're not getting the information you want, make it so the information shows up. So I'm going to see if my user will now have this, this um, object here. Right? And all that does, it'll just, for this instance, it should show up. But we're actually not saving anything to the database, and that'll be our final step for this route. Okay, so if we console log the user, we can now see that my list has my object with git crunk and it has an ID. However, if I check my database, and you should like constantly check your database too. Show collections, we have our users there, users.find. <clears throat> I use pretty because otherwise it's so messy. I wish it was just like pretty by default. Um, where am I? Christine. Christine, there's still nothing here. There is nothing here because we did not save this to our database. We did not save it. We just saved it for this instance. So let's com complete this route. Let's go to user.save. That is a mongoose query, right? We're going to save the user. Once we push it, we saw our new user object. We saw this. We want to save this to our database now. So you know what, again, piece by piece by piece, we're going to check to see if the user and its list got saved. So hanging out, I still didn't write a response yet. Uh, I removed my console log. You can leave it here if, if, if you want to see what's happening. All I got to do though is re-query this, and there I am. Here's Christine, and my item on my list is there. It is saved to the database. And because our app is still hanging out, it's waiting and waiting and waiting. Now you guys know what to do. In this app, I just want to redirect it back to my user show page. So let's go to users. And how do we access our user ID? Well, just like we did here, I'm just going to copy paste this guy. So I want to go to users slash ID. If you forget a slash, it'll give you an error because no path exists. So just be very mindful of your slashes and your syntax here. So this should hopefully create a successful post route for our second model list. And if so, then I think I'm done for this morning. Git crunk. Oh, you know what? No, I'll do one more thing. I'll do one more thing. 
so I think I have two git crunks in here now. Let's let's double check that. Yeah, I have two git crunks. Um, because I just want to get crunk all day, apparently, and that's fine. So let's uh, finish this morning review just by displaying um, the list down here. Okay, so let me close everything I don't need. Don't need that. Don't need that. Uh, yeah, I'll keep this up. I think we're done with this, but... Um, okay, so this is the show page. We want to show... Maybe it's an each, right? So we're going to do... Because it's an array, that tells you immediately... Anytime you have an, an array, you want to loop through it. For each, again, we're using, we're accessing the user through data. You know what? It actually has nothing to do with this controller, what we're doing here. So let's open up the user's controller. Where were the show pages here? I'll close this because our functionality for our list works. But uh, the show page. So here we go. So we're sending data as the user. For each data dot list, for each item in our user's list, close the loop. Let's create a UL and an LI. And how can we access the list item? Maybe this. Please, please work. Uh, okay, we're closer. Okay, so we get the object. Um, we get each, we literally get uh, the object living in index zero, index one, and again to access the name, I think you guys know it, it'll be this dot name. And there we go, our list items show up. Um, if you want to build this further, you know, you could put this in an anchor tag, link it up to the user ID. Um, I mean, the uh, uh, what am I trying to do? So, if, oh yeah, to get to, to the list show page, right? So we're done with users. We're able to get our lists showing on the page. Now we go back and forth between controllers. And I'm not going to move on to the next part, but now we can go to the edit page. If we access the edit page for this specific list, show this route. But anyway, it's all the same. Um, that actually concludes the morning because that's a full hour. And uh, the rest of the routes matter of understanding what you're trying to do, what files are actually need, um, do I know how to debug, do I know how to access all the variables and information I want, are my links actually linking to the places I want, double check your URI, right, don't assume that it's hitting your routes. Um, my strategy always just console log to make sure my route is actually getting hit, and I hope that was helpful. Actually, could I get a fifth to five? Um, pointless and really helpful. Woo! Yeah, great. I'm so happy to hear that.